In case you were wondering how hot it is up here, my instant read thermometer says 143. Well, it's 90 degrees out right now, and I have a two-story house. The first floor is okay, but upstairs, no matter how much the AC runs, it is super hot up there. It's 80 degrees up there, and that's because my attic I went up there is about 120 degrees. I was going to build a whole house fan where you cut a hole in the ceiling. You have a fan with louvers that open up. I had a motor. I had uh, these fan blades I was going to use. And then I went to Lowe's, and I saw they had gable end attic fans and they were more than half off. I got this one for 30 bucks. It comes with a thermostat control and this works differently. This runs at the hottest time of the day when your attic gets hot. The whole house fan you run at night when it's cold outside and you draw in all that cold air. Um, one big change I'm going to do with this though is I'm going to put a bypass switch in it that will bypass the thermostat. I'll put it in a bedroom or something and I'll have a pilot switch with a light on it. So I can turn it on, I'll remember it's on, I can turn it off, so I can run it at night, but most of the time it'll be running automatically during the day. Um, so I cut some strips, I got all my tools, and I pre-wired it. I pre-wired to test that bypass switch, and I'll show you how to do that, because I want to do as little as possible up in the attic. Hopefully it'll be a one-time deal. Um, but let me show you how I wired up that bypass switch. So here's the wiring, and the changes I made were adding this switch. I have a, a power coming in, that's this black cable. The, the black goes to the original black, which goes through the thermostat. That's standard. But I did another wire that goes to the switch and then bypasses here the thermostat, goes up to the fan, and there's one neutral wire coming back out through power. So the neutral stays the same. The only thing I'm adding is I spliced in a black bypassing, bypassing the thermostat. And here is I can turn it on and off. Or you set the thermostat control like you do normally and that turns it on and off. So once again all you're changing the neutral is the same the neutral is just coming out which is the white wire that goes out to your power I'm just adding a, uh, a black wire that's going to the switch and then bypassing here from here to here. So again here's the switch that's bypassing it or the thermostat control which will automatically turn it on as well. And again, this was just a test. Make sure I, I'm glad I did it because it took a couple of tries. So hopefully I'll take this up to the attic, do this first, and then do the switch. One last thing I wanted to mention is I only want to go up there once. I don't want to have to run up and down. It's a pain. My attic is not like attics of other people you see where it's plywood and they're standing up and there's tons of room. It's very cramped. I have to climb up all the way over. And if you make a misstep, you're stepping through the ceiling on the drywall. Um, but I brought extra wire. I have an outlet box. I'm going to turn the power off to the whole house so I don't have to check and make sure. I have to put in a new outlet box and I'll splice into that. But a really great tool to have is this uh, non-contact voltage tester. You can just press the button, run it over the wire. Before I used the voltmeter and had to touch the two wires, but with this I can just check in the walls. I can find them and you don't have to even open up the wire. You can just test the wire, see if there's voltage flowing through it. I won't have that problem hopefully because I'm going to turn off the whole house, but um, I brought as many tools as I can think of, staple guns, uh, foam sealant, all the cutters, screwdrivers, extra caps, and I'm bringing chicken wire because one of the vents, I think I have a hole in it, I'm going to cover that up and staple it closed, and extra wood because that fan has to mount on something solid, and I don't know exactly where the joists are, so I might have to put some uh, a frame around where that fan goes, so hopefully it's one trip up, one trip down. Well, that's never a good sign. Two dead bats. Well, here's step one. Uh, those dead bats are over there. And it's because I have some holes in this vent. So I'm going to take this chicken wire and cover that up as best I can. And, in case you were wondering how hot it is up here, my instant read thermometer says 143. <laughs> I've been up here five minutes maybe and I'm sweating, so. Yeah, it's 143 degrees up here. It's 90 or 80 degrees outside, so. Hopefully the fan will help. <laughs> well, here it is mounted. It's not the prettiest thing in the world. I had a 
joist there and there, a stud there and there, and I had to gap it with uh, the OSB. It's just screwed in. The screws aren't really big enough, but I wedged them in. So now I'm going to take this uh, fabric and fill in all the gaps around so it really forces it through. So there's the fan over there, and I'm going to run the power from here. This is a, an overhead light to our bedroom where a ceiling fan is, and they already had a, uh, like a T or a split here, so I'm going to put this box in right there, run the wire to uh, the fan. Well, I thought I was done, and I screwed up. It turns out I connected stupidly to the light switch, and obviously there's only going to be power to the light switch when you flip the light on. So I can hear the fans off because it's right over here. When I flip the switch to turn on this light, it comes on. Duh. So I'm going to take a break and go up and try to find another power line. I think there's one, I don't know where. I'll have to find one and run more cable to the fan so it constantly has power, not just when you flip this light on. Well, turns out if I had looked a little better, there's a box right there. It's right by the fans. Well, I just got done installing the attic fan, and my first bit of advice is don't do it when it's 90 degrees outside, because 90 degrees outside meant 144 upstairs uh, in the attic. So I could only spend about 10 minutes up there. Um, second bit of advice is get everything laid out, know how you're gonna wire it before you get up there. You don't wanna be trying to figure it out. So I had a test wire coming in, all I had to do was disconnect that and put the new wires on and it was fine. Um, and the other bit of advice is know roughly where you think you might find a constant power, not an on-off light switch that's usually a box up on top on the drywall, but try to find power that's constant um, so you don't have the problem that I did where it was only on when I flipped the light switch. Other than that, you're going to need some, board, some scrap boards to bridge that gap and make the frame. It mounted, it's not super loud, um, so hopefully that works in cooling down, sucking out uh, getting all that hot air out and cooling down our upstairs. Well, I installed the attic fan a couple weeks ago and it's been working fine. It's been turning on uh, in the middle of the day when it's the hottest upstairs in the attic. Uh, at uh, over 110, the thermostat kicks it on. Now I want to install two more switches. One is a switch that will uh, provide and stop power to the fan if I want. And another one is a pilot switch with a little light on it. And that will be an override for the thermostat, it'll override it so I can turn it on at night when it's cool outside and try to try to draw in even colder air into the attic. Um, so I gotta go up there, I already have the one cable run, so I'm gonna extend that and the switch is gonna be up here, I have an outlet up here, I'm gonna hide the switch up in the ceiling of the closet, so I have two switches up there, I'm gonna cut through the drywall and put in a double box. So here's what it looks like in the closet, there's this uh, closet light that's plugged in and this is the switch where I got the power. Now this is the power to the fan. I can turn this on and off. So now there's power going to the fan. Now there's no power going to the fan. It won't turn on uh, even if the thermostat kicks on. So you turn that on and here's the pilot switch. The light's off. And you can hear that fan kick on and the light turn on. I had it wired up differently because it's not a Technically, they wanted a load from the fan. I did it with just a white and a black wire, but I had them switched, so I'll explain how it comes in. The one side of the switch has two brass screws, and then there's a brass and a silver. You want the power coming in, not, uh, uh, you want the power coming in to the brass by itself, then the neutral going out with the two brass switches. Then the second brass switch, you connect that with the ground. And that's how you get the light to come on. It's technically not the right way to do it, but it does work. You don't have to have load from the fan itself. So I just got to patch this up. It kind of tore out, put the cover on, and this will be all done. Well, it wasn't exactly how I planned it, and it's not a whole house fan, but hopefully this will work as an attic fan, and I can bypass it and turn it on and have it operate a little bit like a whole house fan at night. So, hope this helps.